Hey, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry and Instagram. And this is episode 77, and it's a boy. <laughs> There's no beating around the bush here. No, just all out on the table. So just, I'm so excited. I was telling complete strangers at the hospital, the uh, checkout clerk at the doctor's office, everyone, the valet, everyone I could tell. So we found out today that we are having a little boy. So Roland's gonna have a little brother. It's so exciting. Um, I have the ultrasound pictures and looking at it. I haven't taken it home yet. I'm recording from work in case you can't tell by the change of scenery. Yes, I brought everything with me today. So thinking I can record before I go pick him up because I get out of work early on Fridays. So. Um, yeah, but I think the profile is completely different than Roland's, like a very different nose. So I have to look at that because my husband's nose and my nose are super different. So, <laughs> so there's that, my little bit of baby gush. But the baby is healthy and doing great and slightly smaller than Roland was at this age. So it's cool to compare and know like, oh, and that's why this is different. And that's why this other thing is different. But it is boy. Got to see it. So, yay. What's going on with you? My goodness, I hope I didn't overrun you um, in the last week uploading all of the Expected Knitter podcasts. I hope it wasn't irritating. If it was, just delete them. Don't watch them. But I did want to get them up there. Um, just, just for me. And it, for me personally, it's been fun to go back and say, oh, I'm week 19 right now. What was going on with me in week 19 last year? And I can tell you that I did figure out that this little guy right here, I finished him. His name is officially Legs Dinosaur. That's what Roland would call him, Legs Dinosaur. And he runs around and he shoves it in people's faces and says, Legs Dinosaur. Um, so Legs Dinosaur is a Rebecca Danger pattern um, knit on US zeros, 2.0 millimeter needles. And I used the Opal Blind Venus color yarn. Um, I have to tell you that I knit this during week 17 this year, this time, this pregnancy, and the original socks were knit during week 17 when I was pregnant with Roland. So how weird is that? He picked out the color, like I gave him lots of color combos and this is the one he picked out and so I knit it right up. But I thought that was the strangest thing. I was like, whoa, that's weird, weird. And then I watched week 18 and that was lots of sock knitting and you're about to see three pairs of socks on the needles. When do I ever have three pairs of socks on the needles? So, strange pregnancy, things that makes you do. But anyways, this was a really fun pattern. Um, I really enjoyed knitting it, almost seamless construction. I talked about that last time. I think when I look at the Stegosaurus, has the little spines down the back, which I did for his um, Susan Boynton dinosaurs blanket dinosaur that I knit six, eight, ten months ago. Those little spines, the, the plates that stick out the back are quite tedious to sew on. And so I'm not really looking forward to that. And the T-Rex, I'm not psyched about that. So um, he really enjoys playing with Legs Dinosaur. So we'll just let him play with this for a while before I cast on another one. Because I know that I had been really gung-ho about it, but now I'm not so much. I'm, I'm on to other things. So um, I did finish. Also, I did a lot of finishing this week. Um, my wins G-Fat, which as you recall, maybe, I am using Melbrigo Rios in color 870, which is Can Dom, Can, Can Dom, I don't know. Um, US size 6 is, I haven't blocked it, sorry, I wanted to block it before I showed it to you because it does look lumpy and wonky. And I tried to make it a little longer to make a uh, slouchier style hat than the beanie look and I'm using this to show myself how does this look? I'm not real wild about it. Um it's okay. It's it's probably going in the gift box to be honest. Can you see the color difference in it? And I knew it when I cast it on. Like I hand wound the ball and I noticed that the stuff I started winding um was very dark purple and then as I finished it seemed more of a yellow lighter color. And it definitely showed up in the knitting as I went through it. So I wish it was more of this dark purple color, but whatever. So we'll wash and block it and see what happens. But fun pattern. 
definitely would knit it again. Although, um, if I were to make, well, I kind of wanted to make a beanie for Steve, but he wants a classy hat, and this doesn't qualify as classy. So. <laughs> um, his last classy hat was the, oh, come on. It's by Spunky Eclectic. It's the colorwork hat. Uh, is it one of the top 10 patterns that you typically see. And um, I just took my timer, sorry. One of the top 10 patterns, uh, so color work, I don't remember, but it's knit with a black self-striping yarn alternated with a gray alpaca yarn, so it has a little bit of a halo to it, but not much, and it's very warm, and he loves it, it's his classy hat. So you'll see what he wants me, I let him pick what I should knit for him, because I do want to knit him a hat. I can't just knit hats for me, and I'm trying to knit more hats this year. It's one of my goals, one of my intentions. So uh, next, I cast on, and bound off, so you haven't even seen this, completely new to you, a bandana cowl. And I haven't even worn it because this is some, this yarn, let me see, would probably classify as some of my oldest yarn. Oh, it's a little off center there, huh? Um, some of my oldest yarn because it was uh, a UFO for years and years and years. The sweater vest with a hood on it and I ran out of yarn and I ordered more yarn and then I realized that the sweater vest had beautiful cables down the front but this is called plaid and it really is a uh, barber pole two color, two or three, it's several plies uh, and different colors and you just couldn't see the cables and it took me years as a knitter to develop enough to realize that that's why I didn't really like that that best or didn't wasn't interested in finishing it so um yeah so it sat for a while and then I frogged it all out and I didn't frog it all out did I no because I only had a, a little over a skein left so this was what was left so maybe this is what I didn't finish knitting into the hood because I was like I give up I quit um and if you're curious you can see it in my frogged projects on Ravelry but anyway, so this is the bandana cowl by Pearl Soho. This, the yarn is Roman plaid. Um, the color is 166, and it took about 130 yards. The pattern requires more than that, but I just knit until I was out of yarn. And it's not as deep. There isn't as much depth in it as the, because um, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. I don't think I'm, well, it's a free powder. Anyways, um, so it's not as tall this way as the one as the pattern that intended, but I think it's good enough. I think it looks good. So, uh, but anyways, the reason why I was talking about how old it is, is the yarn is a bit dusty or, or something. I don't know, but every time I touched it when I was knitting with it, it would make me sneeze like uncontrollably. So I just worked my way through it. So I, this needs to be, but I'm not sneezing now. I'm noticing that, I don't know if you are. So this needs to be washed and blocked and then I'll see if I can wear it or if it goes in the gift bin. Um, I knit it on with size 10, 6.0 millimeter needles, so it did flat right along in like two days I knit the whole thing. So, there's another FO. Look at all these FOs, I'm banging them out. I have one more, but I'm not gonna show it to you right now. Oh, wait a minute, let me just, just work away there. <laughs> so I also cast on um, the, and I shoved the pattern in here, the Seamless Soloma Slippers by Megan Williams of Stockin' at Zombie fame. Um, I've wanted some slippers for a while now, just something to have to keep in one of the bins under the coffee table so that when I'm down there and my feet are cold, I can pull them on. And um, not something too big. So this is Inspiration Dye Works, the fluffy base, so that's 100% merino yarn, held double on US size 6, 4.0 millimeter needles. The colorway is turquoise thunder. Don't you love it? I love it, and it's so squishy, so squishy. I have not had a lot of experience with holding yarn double. In my knitting career, it's not something I've done, I've done a lot of. So I'm casting on for like the, I think it's the 11 inch foot, I know my foot, I wear a size 11, but it's like 10 and three quarters inches, no, 10 and 10.3 inches. So I thought 11 inches would be good. Um, they won't be too snug for me, but really I've kind of lost my motivation for this. Um, the reason, hang on, my timer. The reason I wanted to knit these, I want to knit Roland a pair, right? Cause he ends up downstairs barefoot a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> And our hardwood floors are very cold. Like there's a, a scatter rug in the living room, not scatter, 
what an eight by 10 rug in the middle of the living room, but he's typically like running everywhere on the first floor of the house. So um, I'd like to figure out how to get him a pair. So I measured his butt, measured six inches. It's not that big for a two year old. I don't know, he wears a size nine. I should double check that online. But a nine runs about six inches. He was such a good little sport. Let me measure your foot. Okay, let me measure it again. No, <laughs> which is more than I've ever gotten in the past. Usually he's like, don't even come near me with a measuring tape. <laughs> Why? But um, yeah, so my plan is to knit a pair for me, see how the pattern construction works, and then use percentages to knock it down to knit a pair for a six inch foot. And then go back and finish mine. Did I say knit a pair for me, knit a single for me? knit for him and go back and finish mine of course because you know typical mother put the child first <laughs> his cold feet are more important than my cold feet so that's what's in here um and i did oh, isn't it a gorgeous color so pretty such a waste to be well it's not a waste it's not a waste because i'm gonna just have them out and around and i will love them they will probably get more wear this way than they would as a pair of socks so because I tend to wear my socks and then they sit in the hamper for a while until, for probably a couple weeks, until there are enough to do a load of hand knits. Or a, oh, look at this. They're all coming off the needle. Okay, I'm just going to show it to you and then I'm going to set it aside. Um, Doctor Who fans out there, did everybody see that there's a Torchwood Season 4 that came out? Like, how did they do this? Spoiler alert. Everybody died at the end of Torchwood. And there's like 10 episodes and it has Mikhail Pfeiffer, I think is how you say his name, as like the big face on the cover of the, of the season. And so I started watching it and then I got addicted to it and I burned through it between, I think between last time we talked and now. And one night I did this. <laughs> so I have some leftover yarn. This is Janet's Super Wash Me Sock. I think it's Louisiana colorway. And um, I don't have enough to do a pair of socks, but I had some contrasting colors that went. I have a blue, I don't know if it's in this bag, there's the blue. So those match. So I thought, oh, I'll do heels and toes, and if the toe is green and the heel is blue, that's fine. Like, whatever I need to do. And they can be shorties, I'm fine with that. So in one night, I was shocked at how much knitting I accomplished. No, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> Maybe I will do this, and I'll edit it out. So, um, I made it this far. The yarn is, you can see it, it reminds me of Socks That Rock, the way that it's dyed, that it's doing that spiral, like half is blue and half is pink. And I tried varying the number of stitches and I tried varying, like knitting from the other end of the skein to try and break it up and it's just, it's not happening. And so I stopped, I did that one evening and I was like, oh. And I like this yarn because it is a thicker yarn and even though I'm knitting it on size ones, it feels like it's going really fast. It's like maybe it's closer to a sport weight yarn, I'm not sure. But, um, so I wasn't sure what to do because these would definitely be for me, the little Franken, Franken socking here. And I don't know, I've always loved this color. So can I handle the irregular pooling that's gonna spiral and then, well, and I guess it won't go too far out of whack if I do a contrast heel, cause I won't be doing the gusset increases, but oh, I don't know. It's a messy pickup, but they're all safely on the stitches because I know that when I watch podcasts and I'm like, ah, oh, fix it, just fix it. Don't throw it back in your bag like that. So, okay, no need to worry. I take care of it for you. <laughs> So those are on the needles. I haven't even made them a project page because I'm not sure if they're gonna live or not. But that's one pair of socks. So there's that. Next, here's my fourth FO to show you. Whew. Super productive Stephanie. I told you things were gonna change. <laughs> In case you are unaware, we have now entered the sock portion of the show. So I so showed you those first socks that I knit while watching the Torchwood series, which I didn't tell you it was pretty good. I mean, there were some I recommended it to my parents when I was like three episodes in because my dad likes Doctor Who and Torchwood. He started it. <laughs> and um, and then there were some really gory scenes later on, which I know my mom would not tolerate. So you, you can't be too squeamish or you gotta be able to hit fast forward and take out your earbuds. So <laughs> anyways, um, 
So the other socks are the Grinch socks, pair number three. So they are finished in all of their beautifulness. I love them. Absolutely love them. I hope you're seeing the color well. I don't remember who it was on Instagram that was like, hey, lady, maybe they mislabeled the yarn and it's not faded blue. Maybe it is the Christmas colorway. Thank you. <laughs> I was complaining so much about it and it's like, oh, I didn't think of that. So, um, yeah, I love them. So the first sock, I did something a little different than I normally do, which I then didn't remember for the second sock. I wanted to bind off with this red all the way around the cuff. And so instead of doing my traditional one by one rib for 10 rows, I ended up doing it for 12 rows. And when it came time to do this one, I'm going along and I can see where the red is and I'm not getting to the red. And so I do my regular 10 rows. I'm like, well, I'll push it. I'll do one more. I do 11 rows and then it's still not red. And I'm like, well, I have to bind off. They can't be too different. And so I start binding off. I finish binding off. I pull out the second sock to line them up and I count. I'm like, oh, that's why it was 12. So we got a little peak of red on the second sock, but that's okay. I think they're great. I can't decide if I wear them now or if I wash them and then put them away so that they're fresh for next Thanksgiving, start of Thanksgiving to wear. But I'm really excited. First pair of self stripey or socks to have done for the year. So yay, those are off my needles, which enabled me to cast on for a new pair. I had posted in the Stockin' Up Zombies Classifieds, not this pair, but the pair before I was knitting, I wasn't wild about. And so I posted it, would anyone care for these socks and no one responded so I ended up knitting them for a friend and just saying okay fine meanwhile J Kelly 70 sent me a message and said "Ooh, I don't want those but I'd take another pair and since I know I'm gonna be knitting socks this year um, she picked the sugared violets color of Felici knit picks Felici from my stash and so it's purple time baby <laughs> so these are um, US size ones 2.0 millimeter needles my favorite 64 stitches toe up i'm going to do a two by two rib but i'm just starting you can see the color change i have to tell you though this skein started with a light purple this skein starting with dark purple so i'm gonna need to go for a while to see when we hit up when it lines up again i'm not sure if it's a like a three color because it's definitely three colors in this game if it's three colors um, and it repeats that way or if it's a, an irregular repeat or what and so I could see how much I'm gonna have to pull out to line it up because I want matching socks she wants matching socks come on but I have to say I was a little hopeful that my sock classify would get me some smaller feet Smidge smaller. <laughs> okay, I'm really happy to be knitting them and to know that they're gonna go to a good home with someone who appreciates socks so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is what I have on my needles right now, but I can tell you a few things that are coming up. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I did some, oh, I'm not the brightest bulb. Because I'm at work, I brought my iPad. I told you, I packed everything up, I was on it. Yeah, and the battery's run down and I can't jump on the internet, so I can't show you a picture. Sorry guys, unless it's saved. No, no, I can't. Well, that was a waste. Oh, I could bring it up on my phone. Do you care that much? No. Let's just say, the classy, classy hat that Steve wants is called um, Jason's Tweed Hat. It's by Melissa Tom Thompson. You can pretty much plan to see it next week completed because um, it is knit with uh, Blackstone Tweed Chunky which I believe, rec yeah, recommends US 10 and a half. So I think the pattern is knit on size 10. It's basically a long beanie with a very chunky brim that he can fold up. And this was the color, this is the exact color of the pattern because I want him to like it. And so, you know, I brought up, I did a search and I brought up a page of hats and he went through it and he was like, I like that one. And it was like, do you want another color? No, I like that one. So. He still doesn't get that I can customize. So, you know, he'd look at slouchies and be like, I don't want a slouchie yet. I'm like, you don't have to have it, slouchie. But, so, he thinks he's shopping like a catalog and has, but I know he does, he knows what I can do. I don't mean to belittle him, but I think he's just, has a hard time envisioning what that could be. So, I did order three skeins of this. Um, it is a discontinued yarn. I had to go to Dizzy Sheep, yes 
to get it. And it's still kind of pricey, but I think it's pretty soft. And um, I think it's like $10 just gain, but then I got the discount, so it wasn't bad. And it arrived within, well, I ordered it, I think, Sunday, and it was here on Thursday, so pretty quick. Um, I also ordered some Langevol action yarn um, for, that's what it'll look like, knit up for knitting some socks for my dad so you remember i mentioned i want to do socks for steve and for my dad this year so just some guy colors this was only 14 dollars. good deal um a little bit more classy i keep using that word if you if this was a drinking game i would have everybody drinking and then you recall the um the vivid blanket i was working on everything changes when you now know what you're having but <laughs> sorry had just went there and so I said it. Um, I had a purple, a blue, a green, yellow, and a red. And I felt like I was missing an orange and the orange I wanted was pumpkin, so it would have the heathered color. And I looked a few places and I couldn't find it and I finally found it. So um, I hadn't looked, I think I had looked at webs and maybe my LYS, I don't know. I looked a few places online and then I gave up because it was like, well, I'm not gonna order one skein of that for a project that's gonna go on for a while. But since I was placing an order, I was able to find it and just throw it in. So here's another skein of Broca Vintage in the pumpkin colorway. And so now that I'm not feeling so on hold because I are held back by not having all the colors I want and able to lay out my squares, um, I expect I'll be working on my Vivid again. And I did get a brown to go with it just to kind of balance out the bright because the yellow is I mean it's a it's a gold color but I thought brown would be nice too so I got that and then I'm also thinking now that I know so I had been holding on what to knit and it, you know picking up colors there are several um baby vests or baby t-shirts out there that I want to knit for this little guy right away so probably the six month size since he'll be born in June uh yeah it'll be good for the fall um, I don't want to do the sleeves. I know, know from experience that that gets in the way of the whatever activity um, they're into. And, it's, you know, he's going to wear it for a couple hours and then he's going to spit up on it and then it'll be dirty. So, <laughs> so why not make a little tank top vest just to keep his core warm because that's what I want to keep warm. How funny is it to be saying him instead of it? Okay. And so that's what I'm thinking about. So that I've, I've been waiting. I've been wanting to knit that and waiting. So, um, and maybe, maybe a Christmas tree hat. I need to make him. So Roland had the rainbow Marley hat that he wore when he was born. And that's like, those are what his newborn pictures are in. That was everywhere with him for the first two weeks. So I don't want to do exactly the same, or maybe I'll change the color sequence and knit thing to one of those. I'm not sure. We'll see. But I need to make him his own special going home from the hospital hat because Roland's is Roland's. So, um, and then lastly, we were killing time. We went to, anyway, long story short, to get, I drive past Steve's work to get home. Roland's with me. He goes to daycare here in the building. Um, and so neither one of us felt like cooking and we wanted to do something different. So we said, oh, let's go to Olive Garden. Kid friendly. We'll go out to dinner with Roland. Okay. Just makes you like so, makes me so anxious eating in a restaurant with him for some reason. Like he does a great job, he doesn't scream or anything, but I just I can't enjoy my meal, so I don't really like to do it. But um, so we had Roland and I had to kill half an hour until Steve was done with dinner, so we went to Michael's, and they had this stuff on sale, and it's just so Valentine'sy. So I'm gonna knit some washcloths. Um, we use we have we probably use ten a week. Roland uses them as napkins. So with his mouth, you know, wet and then a towel, he wipes his hands and he's very much, he wants clean hands. So, so we've talked about the, what's on the needles, what's future on the needles, what's come off the needles. There's just one more thing I want to talk about today. And that is the whole blip thing. They're making me a little crazy. I have to tell you, I got the email this week and I was like, what's up blip? Could you just perform the service I want you to perform and stop making my life so, um, and some of you may not know this, Blip is no longer sending feeds to iTunes. So podcasts, you have to find another place to host your RSS feed to get it to feed into iTunes. I'm not tech savvy. That's not what I do. I'm, no, no, no. So 
Um, and I do it, I podcast because it's easy and because I enjoy watching podcasts. I probably watch 20 podcasts a week and I watch them all on my phone. New case, isn't it pretty? I got it for Christmas, I love it. Um, on my phone or on my iPad. Also in a new case, I also got that for Christmas. I love it, six bucks on Amazon. Anyways, um, and I use the podcast app, which, <laughs> You know, I have a lot of podcasts to keep up with. I watch probably 20 regularly, and that's like three or four a day to keep up with and follow through. And being from New England, being a fast talker myself, I watch everything on double speed. And to think about having to go out to people's blogs to watch their podcast, because that's what um, Blip is trying to accomplish with this, is to get people to stop watching through ag aggregators, whatever they're called, podcatchers, those type of programs. Um, it's just, it's daunting, you know? I don't want to get a bunch of emails. I like that I can go one place and there are all my knitting friends waiting for me. So as a, as a podcaster, it's not a big deal. Like, I'll figure it out and if I don't, then it just won't show up in iTunes anymore. And, or I'll stop recording. But as someone who consumes podcasts, I find this infuriating. <laughs> don't rock my boat, don't change my world, what are you doing? So I've enlisted uh, Steve, who knows a smidge more about technology than I do, to see if he can figure it out. If you're watching this and you're a podcaster and you have a solution, please share it with me. Or you're just a tech person out there who knows a solution. <sighs> so February 28th is the uh, drop date. So if, uh, if your podcaster suddenly stops showing up at the beginning of March, you'll know why. So. <sighs> More to come on that. Anyways, not to end on a down note, let's think about the, uh, the little guy and knitting dishcloths and whatever else hops onto my needles and then hops right off again. I love accessories. They are so quick and easy. So quick and easy. Mm. Oh, and the other thing, I have to figure out this after I thought heel business again because the socks for J. Kelly, I need to, I wanna keep the colors in sequence for her. So I wanna get an afterthought heel in there. And I thought like three inches, but I wasn't sure from the total foot length, I wasn't sure what the right spot is. So I have to learn something, imagine that. <laughs> so that's it for me. I hope you're having a great week. Happy Friday, yay! I will see you in about 10 days or so with lots more to talk about. Take care. Play the guitar. Nice guitar.